Hello, it's Philip Taylor from Richmond Green Chambers speaking. I'm talking about a very interesting book. It's about a man and it's about what he's done at the beginning of a brand new concept and that's the European Court of Justice and the early stages of our European Union development. The book is called Making Community Law. This is a copy of, of the front page here. The Legacy of Advocate General Jacobs at the European Court of Justice. It's a series of essays edited by Philip Moser and Katrine Sawyer and published by Edward Elgar. It interested me because for my bar finals I did European Union law in those days it was something slightly different from what we now have and I was aware of the way in which the development of the ECJ was taking a much wider role within um, English common law. What I've called this review is a fine legacy for the early days of EU law and that's where you'll find it on the internet and in the various journals because I say that Francis Jacobs will clearly be seen as one of the founding fathers of modern European Union jurisprudence with his 574 opinions set out in order at the annex to this book which is a, a, a deep worthy tome it's a splendid compilation of views, in my opinion, edited, as I say, by Moser and Sawyer. There are ten highly distinguished uh, appreciations from 16 of the most prominent names associated with the development of EU law in practice and in the academic world. And the book can be seen, in my view, as a piece of history of the early days of European lawmaking, done actually in a warm friendly and at times jolly manner, uh, where the book obviously came out of a conference in 2006 um, from the United Kingdom Association of European Law. And Lord Slynn has actually paid uh, a nice tribute to the quality of Jacob's opinions and their jurisprudential correctness with his thoughtful preface. So as I say, you've got some leading players, some heavy hitters here. Now, as I said, when I was a law student, I didn't really understand the role of the Advocate General properly. So the book was a good reminder to me of the role uh, that he actually has fulfilled. And this is now many years later. You see, the job Jacobs did was to provide independent and impartial opinion once the parties had completed their submissions, but before the judges had actually begun their deliberations over a particular matter. So, really, like everything you've got with the EU, it takes time up. But the concept and the method of creating community law is a new way, and obviously to some, and it's obviously looking at legal problems and assessing the correct outcomes in a slightly different way because one is dealing with such a variety of cultures and customs on the continent. The many diverse fields of community law as it's developed are well explained covering things like the freedom of movement which we're familiar with at the moment uh, both of goods and people to the emerging principles of modern human rights law across the whole of the Union. The contributors, who are distinguished people, have analysed Jacob's legacy well, and Slynn sums up much of the compilation when he writes of Jacob's qualities of expression in terms of both exploratory and creative areas, when he says they may have a longer term effect on the development of the law than the short term importance of the immediate disposal of the case, how true he is. This well-respected um, person has obviously has been placed in a special position 
with the evolution of community law because he's effectively an ideas man who has had to face up to hard EU cases. Conrad Scheman has made a comment which I think is quite interesting when he says he will reread part of the book quote to stimulate my mind on what I trust will as a result become a clearer judgment and he illustrates as a result of saying that the inspirational tone when it comes to the shaping of our EC stroke EU legal order obviously this is where I'm merging the concept of the community with the concept of the union as it's developing and I'm hoping that one day those pests who call themselves the Eurosceptics will read this work and see what is actually trying to be achieved here because obviously the advocate General Jacobs has created something new I suspect the book will become essential reading for quite a few law students and trainees. I've certainly been recommending it for those doing the undergraduate LLB. Um, and it looks at the concept of community law in a slightly different way, developing a firmer design for the first half of this new century. So to sum up, I would say that the book is a worthy history about a worthy man's opinions, which will shape the European ideal for decades to come, as new lawyers come to grips with the concept of what we've known as community law and what it means for the jurisprudent. So it's well worth a read, but remember it's a bit heavy. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.